What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video and today we're here with the 13.1 update. Maintenance has finished and people are trying to dive into this update and figure out what's exactly different. What have they introduced here? Because sometimes stuff that they haven't even talked about in this update notice actually does find its way into the game. So in this video today I'm going to go through just a few things that I've noticed just to give you guys a bit of a rundown in terms of what has actually changed with this update and I do think this is actually a pretty good update for a couple of different reasons before we jump into all of the different update features though there is a bunch of stuff that has been updated uh, this one here talking about the special description of Dofi and Croc dual unit has been updated we have another one here talking about the counter effect during grand party and that was the reason why in the previous season you only had to get 12 wins to get the max amount of rewards so this has now been changed with the latest 13.1 update so I do assume that with the latest grand party season that's inevitably going to arrive that it's probably going to go back to 15 wins unfortunately I know I wish it, I wish it wasn't the case and then there was a further update in regards to Luffy and Yamato and the way that Luffy is able to charge his super switch gauge uh, because sometimes it wouldn't actually work so now it's it's actually going to be activated which is good so there's a lot of stuff including some pipe rumble updates you know a bunch of other stuff but we're going to start the list with just something that's kind of minor and it's just the home screen here the background has been updated to be the wano theme you can see the curtains the uh the black the green and the orange They're, those are the the wano curtains you've got the the lanterns of course and if you swipe really quickly you can kind of see a bit of the background there this is the wano kuni themed uh, background if we go over to the event page as well it has also been updated to have the wano theming on it as well and i feel like this is probably to go in line with the big thing that's going to be arriving august 5th and i know a lot of people are very very much excited about that also i've done it myself but there is a brand new update island as well where you can clear it you get a gem you get a potion and a turtle it's just a free gem at the end of the day, which is kind of nice. So I guess one of the first things we'll talk about with this brand new update, when we go over to the power up feature, there is a new button in the bottom left hand corner, the auto power up. When we go ahead and click that, it's going to give us this screen here. And obviously it's going to change depending on, um, you know, what characters you have in your character box that are currently available. But it says that we can actually power up these duplicate characters that we have here. So you do see that, you know, we have, um, what's this guy, Mr. Tanaka, and then we have Pirate Rumble Rare Recruit Smoker. We have a base character designated, and then we have our duplicates after that, and we can actually feed all of these simultaneously, which means cleaning up after a Sugo Fest is going to be much faster. This was something that I was a little concerned about when they first announced this feature, was I was kind of under the impression that it was only going to be one character at a time you could feed all these duplicates into, and if that was the case, that would actually be a terrible update, and it doesn't actually speed up the progress of clearing out our box after a Sugo Fest haul. This time, we can feed, I believe, up to five different groups of characters into one another, which is so, so good. It means that you don't have to scroll through your character box, click on a character, then feed that one character. It does it all for you, which is good. There is some information about it, though, because there is some nuance to this. It says that up to five groups of rare characters of the same evolution tree can be set for auto power-up. You cannot use the auto power-up feature for Sugo rare characters, which I do think makes a lot of sense as there may be some potential abilities you want to specifically feed those characters into. It does go more into it in just a moment too. Auto power-up group will uh, f for up to five groups prioritize in the order of the most number of characters from a single evolution tree and if the same number of characters of the group with the oldest rare recruits are selected so basically what this means is is the five groups of characters that you can feed it, it prioritizes what to feed based on the amount of dupes you have and then if there's an equal number of dupes then it goes by the oldest rare recruit will be uh you know one of the characters you can feed obviously but you can go through the list and select which ones you actually want to power up it says after the auto power group has been designated it will select one of the characters with the following priority as the base character so you obviously need a character to feed all the dupes into and it designates it by the most number of power-ups done on that one character which i actually kind of find a, kind of fascinating like they actually 
know how many times each individual character has been powered up that's a lot of data to hold for each individual character for each individual player on their account um so you've got number one being the most number of power-ups and if you have two characters with the same number of power-ups then it goes by the highest level limit break progress then it goes by the highest potential ability level then by special level support level rarity uh, highest character level and then the oldest recruited date so i feel like this is a pretty fair way to determine which is the base character to feed into it is odd that one of the priority listed isn't just is the character favorited or not because typically people will favorite the character they want to keep as their base form and duplicates obviously won't be favorited i know that people can do that but still it is interesting nonetheless that that is actually a thing but Either way, due to the order above, the selected base character may be in a pre-evolution form and or lower character level than other available characters. If an evolution tree does not have two or more characters, it will not be applied for auto power. There's a, there's a lot of nuances to this, obviously. You can go through all of this yourself. Uh, we have the green text here. It says, once a base character is designated, it will auto power up by using the pre-evolution form first and power up. For each group, up to 12 characters will be used in the order of recruitment. So only up to 12 characters per time can be fed, which actually makes sense because you can have a maximum of uh, three potential abilities. You need four level ups per one, four times three is 12. Does make sense actually. Uh, the following will be excluded for being used during power ups. So you've got booster characters, evolvers, non-type characters, characters set in a crew or a team. So basically, not every character will be put as a character you can feed. There are some listing characters here that you that will not be pulled. Basically, if you've just recently pulled them in a Sugo Fest and you have not touched them, you can use them for auto power up, which is what the whole system I feel like is kind of there for. Um, it says the unlock powers will be set in order of the highest level of the base character and the level of the newly obtained power. If multiple powers with the same levels exist, it will prioritize them in this order. Charge special, bind, despair, auto heal, damage reduction, which I feel like is fine. As long as those top five are like that, and then you got slot rate boost as number six, the rest don't really matter. So I feel like that's pretty fair, honestly. It's a fair way to put it. Potential abilities will prioritize the following four abilities first. Final tap, super tandem, uh, and then Final Tap slash Super Tandem, as well as Rush Sugo Special. It is interesting, though, because Sugo Fest characters, Sugo Fest exclusives, cannot be used for the auto power up feature, yet they do prioritize these abilities first. I mean, specifically, like, you know, Super Tandem and Rush Sugo. I guess that does kind of make sense if they introduce, like, free to play characters that, that have these abilities. We've seen the Rare Recruit Admirals last year have Final Tap. And, you know, there's obviously a few free-to-play super tandems. So I guess that kind of makes sense. When you feed duplicates, these big abilities will be prioritized first. But the rest of them, I feel like, will be kind of random, right? Like, if you have a new character and you, you've pulled some dupes and you want to feed them into, like, fear resistance compared to, like, pinch healing, for example, uh, you, I think you may have to do that manually just to make sure you get the right potential abilities. We'll have to wait and see again because there are a lot of nuances to this. Uh, and it obviously gives us a bit more information in terms of excluding the groups of characters you do not want to feed. So if you, if there, as I said, you know, if there's characters that you want to feed that have very, very powerful potential abilities, uh, and it may, you know, go into the other potential ability you don't want, you may just want to unselect the group so that this smoker character will not be fed. Either way, I think this is a good update. This is a good way to show how you can clean up your box much more efficiently after doing a bunch of pulls in the Sugo Fest. Now, the next thing that we can talk about is the filter functionality that they've added with 13.1. So in the top right hand corner of the screen, this is a really powerful function that I think a lot of people really need to take notice of. So now, previously, you could only filter through certain specials. So if you want a character that removed bind and despair, you click OK and it filters all the characters in your character box, you know, for bind and despair, but you could do it for any other debuff, right? But now what they've done is, which is so good, is now you can filter certain crewmate abilities and support abilities, which is massive. This is my first time actually playing around with this. So for crewmate ability, you've got uh, boosting damage. Okay, right. So uh, boost damage versus a dex enemy. That's interesting. So if we go over to like Zeph, for example, and then we have a look at his crewmate ability. 
uh, boost damage from normal attacks dealt by this character to dex enemies. So it allows you to filter through certain damage dealing supports, which is kind of cool. You've got this uh, for, for certain status recovery, so dealing with special reverse and special bind. That's actually really cool. I wonder if this actually filters um, like for the whole crew or not. So I know that Alveda, Rare Recruit Alveda, who is a dex unit right there on the right-hand side, she actually filters it for the whole crew. So that's interesting. It doesn't specify between the whole crew or just the character itself. So you do have to do still like have a look at characters and see what they're actually able to do. What are these other effects? HP recovery at the end of the turn. Right, because these characters characters give you ad additional auto healing effects which is kind of cool so the crewmate ability is very cool but then the support functionality is absolutely massive i think this is probably one of the best changes out there because a lot of the times you would need to like search the database or like the treasure map team planet to figure out what good supports you could actually put on your team and now once you've built a team like for example right i have this team that we'll talk about in just a moment so we have this team and let's say we're, we're looking for a support for whitebeard so we go over to whitebeard and let's say we're looking for a support that wants to remove attack down so if we go to where are we at uh, status effect recovery and we want a support that can remove attack down we have this jozu once per quest if you're inflicted with attack down remove it by two turns so we can just put that on the crew uh shanks and buggy for example uh let's see if we want like a random other support let's see if, if what we can find here is there a support like let's say removing special bind is there a support for that so there is there's going to be this viola once per quest you're inflicted with special bind uh, remove it by three turns at the start of the next turn so we can put that so that's really cool i like the fact that there are ways now to further your team building experience in the application itself without having to resort to third party resources which i think is actually a really good thing so that's awesome a really nice change in the 13.1 update so the next big thing that we need to talk about is the introduction of the ex super special mechanic so if we go over to this pka roger he is the first character in the game to actually get access to this now if we go over to the information it gives us a bit more details about how you can actually use this and what it's actually supposed to do but essentially ex super is like a buffed version of super type and super class now from what we can tell from this free to play roger the restrictions for this effect are going to be more harsh where you have to build your team very specifically to get it to work but the effect of getting a super type and a super class simultaneously is incredibly strong as we know that if you have a super type you get a 1.25 increase i think and then if you get a super class your statistics are increased by 1.2 permanently so this is a very strong effect to get all of this activated simultaneously on top of when you launch the special you actually get an effect like a super type or a super class so in the case of goldie roger his activation requirement you need three specific units on the crew you know You've got Odin, Rayleigh, Whitebeard, Scopper, um, you've got Crocus, Shanks, Buggy, Dogstorm, Cat Viper, and Ace. So you, you've got a pretty good array of characters, but three of your crewmates uh, have to be those units, which is pretty harsh. The effect itself, you get a full board of, of quick slots that go through block, and then super quick characters to quick, and then super slasher characters to slashes. So we'll go ahead and showcase this in a clip right now. So another thing that we're going to talk about briefly before we get into this is the fact that when we had the ability to look at what EX Super Special was going to do, when we go over to the information, it says here, right in the middle of the screen, certain characters that meet the requirements will be able to use EX Super even if they are a crewmate so that got us really excited if these effects could be used as crewmates it opens up the door for really nice team building opportunities and you see here that for his activation requirement it doesn't actually specifically say whether he has to be the captain or not so you know we're wondering it does it mean now that you could literally just have this character as a crewmate and activate this effect unfortunately no in the case of goldie roger you actually still have to be the captain in order to get it to activate which is a little bit uh, underwhelming because you know no one really wants to use this roger really as a captain his multipliers are a lot lower than what we've seen previously you know it is a free-to-play character at the end of the day but you'll see here we have the ex super ready on goldie roger and we have our crewmate Roger and we tap and hold on him and we can't do anything we cannot interact with him however when we have a look at the Goldie Roger as the friend captain you see he has the EX 
uh, button available. So we tap and hold on him and we can activate the EX Super Special. And you'll see that there's a brand new animation that plays here as it shows all the types and classes. And then it shows specifically Quick and Slashes are going to receive the buffs and which characters will receive the buffs. And then we get the full board of Quick Slots, which Roger counts as beneficial as a captain, but also as a crewmate as well, which I also find kind of interesting. He makes Quick beneficial as a sub. So like, why couldn't you use this effect as a sub? Considering how difficult it is to activate, I feel like it would have made a lot of sense if that kind of effect, you know, could have been activated as a crewmate, but I'm sure there will be more characters that release later on down the line that will have the accessibility to use it as a crewmate. Now, the last little thing that I really want to touch up on in this video is the tavern. So there have been a few little upgrades to the tavern that were kind of odd. So the first thing is, is normally when you want to go, let's say you want to go and have a look at the, at the friend point rare recruit, which we will have a look at in just a moment. But normally, you know, you'd have to go all the way to the end going all this way, blah, 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 blah. It takes a really long time to get here. However, what they've added is, is now you can just, if you start at the start, you can just swipe the other way and now you go all the way to the other side. I feel like it's such a small thing, but I don't know why this thing wasn't added from the get go. So strange, but either way, now you can go ahead and just um, move over to the front point recruit very, very quickly. So uh, the first thing is, is we have the ability now to do 100 friend point rare recruits in a row. So we're going to go ahead and do this. I wonder if there's going to be any errors. I know some people have been reporting some errors in regards to this. So uh, we'll do some 100 front point recruits. And apparently, I don't know about this, but apparently there are a lot more Himes that you can get now. So let's see here. We got a lot of lobsters, actually. Uh, we got some Himes, which is kind of cool. And then some, some boosters and, and stuff and evolvers. So, okay, like that's pretty cool. And then, you know, we can do it again. It's a really fast way to use up your friend points now, which is great. Because normally before, with how long it would take to do 10 in a row... It's just so annoying, but if you can just do 100 in a row now, it's much faster to use them, and uh, that's it. We've already used up all of our friend points. We get a bunch of boosters and evolvers. Really, really nice update. But another big change is that there have been additions to special animations. Now, as we currently sit here right now, we don't really know what these animations mean, but I have a little bit of a clip here to show you guys. So this was taken from one of the individuals in the subreddit Discord, and you'll see here that there's actually Haki that releases when you pull back when you're doing your pull. And that's pretty fascinating, actually. I mean, we can go over uh, and, and have a look uh, a little bit further back here and, and just zoom in, but you see that when when he starts pulling back you see like the red hockey effect that will occur and then if you keep holding you'll see that there's like an even bigger zap effect and i don't really know if this means anything but it just looks cool i like that they're doing that and hopefully you know there's further stuff to look forward to and then when you see him release when you go towards the tavern here when you go through all of those tavern doors there's a bunch of gold and treasure sitting at the door now, which is also a new update. Again, we don't really know if this is going to further increase our chances of pulling, you know, certain units or it guarantees you certain things. Obviously, according to the news post, it said that it doesn't guarantee you anything. So it is weird that they even add this in the first place. I feel like if they're going to add these new animations, they should have animations that guarantee you certain things. So I just found that a little bit bizarre. So through the editing process of this video, there was actually a new clip that was released from another individual in the One Piece Treasure Crew subreddit Discord, which shows us a new extended animation cut-in that occurs. Now, this looks to be only if you get the red poster on the last poster of the multi, or or maybe a secret red animation but this could be like a new way for them to signify that hey you just pulled the brand new legend of the banner and if that's the case that's going to be extremely hype and as i said i've been wanting something like this for a while something that gives us a bit of an inclination as to hey you just pulled the brand new unit this is the animation that you're going to see if you end up pulling that character and as we know right now you can only get this on the 11th poster of the multi but it would be awesome if this actually shows up in other posters in the middle of the multi we'll have to wait and see but either way this is insanely hype so with that that's pretty much all of the information that we have right now in terms of the 13.1 update i think that mostly this is a pretty good update i'm looking forward to not only just using these brand new features but you know we're looking forward to august 5th the market down in your calendars Hopefully you enjoyed the video today, and if you guys did, make sure to go ahead and leave a like, and if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. On that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.